Welcome to another Shusaku Study Project game. This week's game is the second of four games between Nakagawa Junsetsu, 5 Dan Professional, and Shusaku, 1 Dan Professional, who is, I believe, 12 years old at this time. It is another two-stone handicap game, as you can see in the bottom right. And, well, I think there's not much more to say, so we should just get going. Uh, stones. I think it's generally more interesting to keep track of the captures over here. The stones are pretty too, don't get me wrong, but you know, if you gotta choose. So, two stone handicap. We start uh, fairly standard. There's nothing too much more to say about stones like this. This is the standard response at the time. White pulls back. This was an opening that Dosaku favored a lot. If you go through his games, you'll find that as you get towards the second, the later part of his career, when he's basically exclusively playing two stone handicap games, uh, this is pretty much the opening he settles on for white. Now at this point, black has to kind of choose a, a direction. You can, you can work with these two stones and do something over here. You can try to counter this aggressively and actively. You gotta figure out what you wanna do. But it's pretty much all player preference here, so it's hard to say this might be a, a good or a bad move. And uh, Shusaku gives us a 5-3. Now, if your uh, if your Shusaku meter is is tuned, you will probably start to smell the Taisha, which uh, you know is a possibility once the stone is here. So now this makes the left side bigger and makes this side harder to invade, or like you can reduce it, but it's hard for white to want to do anything here. So as far as white's directions, this is the biggest area, right? Because there's the most lines, if you will. This is least, less interesting to develop because the stone is on the third line, so there's kind of hard, less territory you can kind of surround. And then this is the beginning of the framework, but white would like to come back here in Sente if possible, or do something once black steps in. So, White plays here. Um, this is not the, the way to the Taisha. If you wanted to go towards the Taisha, White would play here. Black would do this, and then White would need to play this. And then even then, there's a way to dodge. But um, you know, you know, we're not going to have the Taisha in this game. And this is a way for White to play uh, up in order to not to keep to interrupt these two stones, the, the line of sight. Uh, black continues to play up. Black is not really bothered. You see that Black is beginning to build something that looks like a framework here. It's a little early to call this a framework, but it is a, it is a, the beginning of a structure, if you will. Um, this is apparently now considered a bad move. Back then, I think it might have been okay. Um, but there is a Joseki that we're going to walk into now which looks probably pretty familiar because you, prob you probably have seen this like a line further out. It turns out this position here is slightly better for white again, because normally like nowadays we only allow accept this when you have two lines underneath, not three lines, right? Um, now we're going to continue the Joseki a little bit. And at this point, um, black has kind of two options. Black can extend here or just push it or uh, sorry, white, I apologize. White can play the tiger's mouth or can push and cut, and this is kind of a good result uh, at this point. So black plays this move, which starts to activate the, the cuts and keeps the group stable on this side. So now white can't make life in a corner, right? So this is, of course, the proper prevent the bulge. It keeps white from making the tiger's mouth. And it makes a base. White extends up. This is a deviation of the Joseki as we have it in Josekipedia. This is probably uh, probably a fighting spirit or kind of a white looking to make complications set up. If you don't finish the Joseki, you create a, a non-standard situation, which might be inferior for you, but you might be able to make complications out of it. Uh, so at this point, uh, white threatens to honey here, white threatens to cut, and black has choices, right? Now the um, black would 
should probably play a move like this one. Of course, you have to deal with the... Uh, sorry, you have to deal with this move. But this would be a nice extension, and it would challenge the, the base pretty directly. It would also it would offer, offer a bit of a direction switch, where white might be able to get strength, but black might be able to get something this way. Um, black is not interested in this kind of easy settling. And so black is going to keep on pushing against white. This, of course, builds this area while white builds this one. And black has the advantage of already having a helper stone here. So white owes a move in development, which is standard for a handicap game. Um, it is now necessary for white to fix the cutting point. Uh, you still have a peep for, for black here. And you've still got, again, that move at C11. Which, uh, which pokes at things a bit. Now, black pulls back. You'll, black is not coming up here because black doesn't want to be in the same kind of in the opposite situation with the cutting points, and giving white more opening moves that might help white settle this area. So black pulls back more safely. And uh, oh man, um, ah. So pull back more safely, this area becomes harder for whites to invade or reduce effectively. Um, later on, there might be something here to do with the peep. Right now, it's not. It's not usable as is. Now, white still has to create more complications, right? Like right now, black is developing a little better than white. So white has to do something weird. And these these areas here aren't interesting because there's there's nothing happening and it's the we're furthest away from black securing an advantage. So white needs to play somewhere on the top. White's move is um, a little confusing, I think. White plays here. It's, of course, an attachment. Attachments are questions. And at this point, white is asking black to choose this direction or this direction. Right? It's pretty simple. There's, there's no danger here other than black being made less effective, so over-concentrated. But at this point, white has to find something to do. Uh, I probably wouldn't have played this move, but I am also not an expert. So, you know, uh, don't take my word for it. Just show this move, show this board position to a professional at some point and say, why did white play here? We'll get a good answer, I'm sure. So at this point, black has to choose a direction, right? So black could choose to go somewhere around here or here or here or here those would be the standard responses right and then you have the crazy crazy responses which you shouldn't see which are like that this is the move this move that i used to play a long time ago that i stopped because it turns out those are terrible ideas but in well in this position they're terrible ideas right in, in other situations with other helper stones this clamp is sometimes fantastic just not today now um white here basically when black chooses something white is going to be able to do something else Right? That's how it works. You get a turn, they get a turn. So white could hurt black stop side development. White could minimize the corner or white could develop outside influence. So like black has to kind of choose what to give white. Uh, now white and black chooses to keep his stones connected towards the center. Now the stones are split effectively. And it's uh, a little bit harder for, for white to do something, but white is continuing down the path. White, again, wants complications, right? He's going to build some strength, but he really wants to create a situation from which he can profit. So we are black cuts, white extends. Of course, it's hard to say that this is... This is unnecessary. It's hard to say that white could afford to not save that stone. But it's also worth noting that uh, at this point, white has a ladder that's good for, for white, right? This way for this stone. So that's important to note. And that's well. And so black continues the local exchange with another split. White counter splits. So this is very much an effort in chi in shifting direction as much as possible. And black captures. Now this 
uh, makes it very... This is pretty much guaranteed territory now. Uh, white doesn't really have entry points in this area. So white gets one more move, which is this forcing move here. There's no co here that's interesting and worth fighting for black. So black just connects, which puts the weakness back on white. And now white has to fight his way out. So this is a very flimsy position for white. It's very thin. But it might be just enough to get something useful done. And this stone has been helpful in managing the direction. Uh, now here, black is going to Atari here. This is, uh, according to the, to the AI, a three-point mistake, because the AI would prefer an extension this way. And there's, there's a sequence in, in the SGF about what happens after this, but the kind of the intent behind this move would basically to take a stronger top right side and uh, and then giving this and some of this away to white. But that's not where we are. Yusaku chooses this, which is uh, a stronger move. That's not the correct color. White captures the stone. And black gets a double Atari here. Now this is, it's tricky for me to figure out, again, how this is still a good result for, for white, but this is a little more strength than white had before. So there's something to manage, right? Like even if white, even if black gets, gets this move, in the very worst case scenario, uh, what these stones are useful insofar as they could cut, right? So I'm not saying giving them up is a good idea now, but Building this strength here is what white would like on this board to impact the rest of the. So, so I think this result uh, is not well. It's hard for me to do something good with this result, and of course it's a two stone handicap game, so white is behind. But this guarantees about twenty seven points for black at the top. This is about twenty seven points. Then this area can be can be cut, can be managed, and so forth. Now, um, this is arguably a co, because you know black can take here, um, but there's no threats because there's no threats in the opening. So at this point, it's time for white to go and choose another base to go. There's nothing really else to add here. You could do cut, but again, there's no threats for, for white. There's no code threats. So this is cutting here doesn't help white's shape. It just makes it worse. So white needs to develop. And you have basically two choices. You have this area and this area. This area, again, because this is on the third line, is less interesting. So white is going to try to reinforce these stones, because if you remember, White owes a development stone here. So white puts that stone here. It's not quite stability for this group because it's pretty far, but it's a promise of stability. Black response, standard roads response. Then white plays up. This is a high enclosure, so you know black has gonna have some of the moves underneath to, to invade the corner if necessary. But this creates a very nice big open area on the right side with this nice open area here. So now if you connect this with these two stones and you compare those four white stones to these two black stones, these are the ones that have an impact on the center of the board right now. So black is going to split the right side now right here this is the biggest area to split uh this is mii there's now mii to make a base you can play here you can play here you can play on the second line you can get out stone is pretty safe and of course you've still got uh, r4 now white is going to start playing with this code this 
Things have changed changed just a little bit. There's a couple of things that white that black cares about now. And now there's room to to work with this. So black is going to need it to, to defend this because he wants to keep the pressure on white. And it is now white's turn to just connect. There's not yet code threats really to use, but this strength is useful. Then black continues to really get the top right corner. This has been a lot of kind of very slow, powerful, very local moves for Shusaku, but they have been effective in denying a base for these stones. Right? And so now white has, uh, has more influence and black has a much steadier base. So now white should be able to prepare an attack for this stone at some point, somewhat effectively. Now, you could do something here to develop a base, but you don't want to play from thickness, right? You want to play away from thickness. So this is, would be the wrong direction. You could do that, but this would make this stone look a little silly. It would make it be very slow. This is not fast development. Uh, so you don't have kind of a good setup over here yet. So white extends here, far from the high Shimari. Now, nowadays, we only really play here. There's a couple of reasons why. It basically makes it harder for black to have an easy way to invade. Like at this point, when you're here, black can step in uh, here. And you get the option of making a base, or you get the option of connecting underneath, basically. right? And when you make a base here, the same sort of pattern happens, ironically, where having played here, this attachment is available. Now, if you go uh, here and you get this move, this attachment becomes available, or this one, whatever. So, oops, I have to pick up the stone after the game's over. Oh, I got it. So now this activates the AG here, as I said, um, but it acts as an extension, so you, it's beginning to activate the, the corner set setup. In the ancient, uh, in the Chinese classical games, if white had a stone here, this would be a very standard position for, uh, for one of the corners to be in before they start playing inside. But this is not a classical Chinese game, it's a classical Japanese game. So Now, um, at this point, white would be happy with any move, like J5 or J5 that grows this area. Not saying that white's gonna get it, but it would be nice. So, black now steps in at c11. We looked at this move a little earlier. This is the time black chooses to play it. Now, normally, as we were mentioning, this would be the point that white would normally take in the Joseki, uh, the classical, this in this now it disused Joseki. Now, the group here has, has a base, right? And it has access to the center, but this stone is now. Uh, correspondingly weakened right now the the interesting thing about this this move is that it makes the next move for white really tempting and really natural looking and it turns out that's not a good so it's possible that c11 was just was absolutely just bait because what white should do next is uh is play here or play here one of these two moves here would be the direct, the correct direction for white to play in, and the reason why would be because you would keep this group from being sealed in. But probably, uh, I'm gonna ignore that there's follow-ups here. I'm assuming that white didn't want to give black this kind of development, and so tried for something else. So, white plays here. And black pretty naturally steps up. It's also possible to, to think that white thought it was okay to do this because white does get this move now. Right, which splits B, which splits black and retains central access. But black gets to grow and force the direction. And now you get 
this shape here. Which, again, it keeps black splits, right? There's a slight danger of this making these stones turn that way, which would still weaken these two. But first, black is going to contest the ice space a little bit, right? And it's pointing at these moves, which would really damage this area. So white's shape is now a bit awkward. That's, you know, it's a fight, so that, that happens. White is going to bump very gently, asking if he can, if he can split. Black says, you can split if you want, but if you decide to take this away, I'm going to take that, and then you're going to be in trouble. So, white has to, I don't know, counter bump? All right, white makes a, a bamboo joint here. So group, here, this can make one eye by playing here. This isn't go if necessary, right? Um, and, and black and can possibly make an eye or has forcing moves around here. Right? Like there's going to this eye shape for, for this group around here. But black is going to continue to develop strength for this group because if you look at the fight that you're looking at, this is one group that's fighting. This group is very stable. It's very strong, not a problem. But these stones are incredibly weak, right? Now, this feels a little bit like a variation or a perversion of the problem of the proverb at, um, attached to strength to, because this, these are weaker stones. But he, we are attacking these stones, which are actually also weak. And I think might arguably be even weaker than, than these stones because these stones have a way out into the center. They can make a base, they can go to the corner. So I think this is the this is the subtlety. Also now, if you recall, I was talking about how the that clamp was a terrible idea over here. Here it isn't. Because here you get two directions. You don't really care if you get the something here. You you're perfectly content to build a strong a strong group of stones that goes out here and attach and attacks this. Right? Now, uh, white plays here to split. This, according to the AI, turns out to be a, a four and a half point mistake. So black is up like 26 points-ish now. Um, the suggestion for the AI, which the variation is in the, the SGF. Um, let me see. It's not really worth going into it, but the basically the end result gets gives black more strength over here towards the center, but uh, it gives white more strength in this area. So this might have been the better result. Well, I mean, the AI suggests clearly was worth four points more, right? But white plays here, black necessarily pulls back. White splits black. This is probably the effort, the, the original strategy desired. Black is content to get stronger against this group. Now, I've got to imagine if you look at this sequence, which is honestly very natural looking, right? Uh, that part of the effort required here is in, keep, is in making this group stronger for fighting purposes. So acting on the liberties of this group as much as possible. But black is still a little bit stronger, so now black gets to play a forcing move, which removes the ice space, and certainly if these stones connect to these stones, I think we agree that this is very, very weak, and it's going to be very unbalancing for, for the game, so white connects, right? And then black turns. Black, of course, keeps white split here, meaning this group has to find another direction to live. It can't just go to an area where there, it might be easier to make a base. Now, this group at this point does not have eyes, right? You can make one in Gote, but it's Gote, so like you just you have to play the move, otherwise it doesn't, it's not there, right? And this group can make one eye. Right now, like if, if white plays at, at here, um, you can still, you're still able to make an eye. 
It's not actually that complicated to figure it out because there's not a lot of options. So download the SGF, click around if you can see it, have fun. It's worth uh, it's worth the exploration. It's a, it is essentially a life and death problem. So, it's, but it's worth looking at how the stones move here because you have this liberty here, you've got three liberties here, you've got this cut, right? It's not completely clear if any if something is one eye, two eyes, if sequences can keep things disconnected. But it's worth poking at this a little bit. So white turns now. White absolutely has to get out, right? Like if, if white gets sealed in, this game is pretty much over. So. Black extends, and white extends as well. To be fair, not much of a choice. Again, you don't want to give black the ability to turn, and then you're squeezed between these two, and uh, these stones look silly because they don't have a base. Right? Just imagine for a second, imagine. These stones feel very sad to me, if this stone is here. Because that's a lot of strength that white has to overcome to do something. So, basically, as white gets stronger somewhere, something else is going to break. So white has to hold back. Um, now here it would be nice if black played here. White would be pretty happy with that, just because it would give it would give white a beat, a chance to go and do something else. But black doesn't really do that because it's not actually urgent in this position. Um, it is slightly problematic if if white gets this, then gets uh, this move, then some things can get tricky from a shape position. But it is two stones, so there is room for there's room for black to choose, and it's not really the end of the world if black just like drops this area. It's like it's not a lot of points, right? This is what really is important. So black doesn't care that much. So black is going to reinforce the corner slightly, slightly, and make, make it harder for this group to get a base. So now the direct result is it squeezes the group out. Uh, the group now has to get out if it wants a chance of making some ice base somewhere because here is not going to be the place where he makes a lot of ice space. It also uh, begins to surround, like, you know, this group is now behind the sector line, right? So black gets out. We have here the panther shape, right? Knight's move plus Kosumi over here. So now, where are we? We are at move 66 in this game. Um, and... This group over here, this group is uh, is unsettled. This group is unsettled. This group is unsettled. And they're all in a running fight together. Right? Um, this group is able to make a Gote Eye by playing here. Uh, this group here can probably make some kind of Eye by playing here uh, and here, which is what gives you an Atari, and then cutting here, because black needs to stay connected, so it's possible to make one eye, but not really two, right? Two, we said, has an eye made on the side, right? Uh, and could probably try to get out with a move like like this one, jump over here with a make the table shape. It, uh, it wouldn't necessarily make an eye directly, but it would help make space for one. Now, that means that uh, and from a uh, liberty perspective, one, two, three, this group is actually in the most danger, but it is kind of connected to these stones, so that's okay. This and this have a lot of liberties, so they're all right from a fighting perspective. So, white is going to turn here, and this is, this works, it has, there's a threat because of this shape, Black will be able to cut here, but Black has to take this into account, right, and figure out the actual fight. Uh, here, white, here, Black's assessment is that this doesn't matter right now, and he continues to challenge this area. He basically is saying, look, if you want to take these stones, that's cool, I'll make some points here. This group can live, I will take 
this, and that is a lot of points. Which, it's hard to argue with that logic, I think. So now, the result is this group doesn't have a base anymore. And the problem is here is that this is a this is a weakness in the shape, so it's hard to effectively run without getting cut off. So now you're actually, I believe, you're and because of that, because you can't run without being cut off, you sort of have to do this to make to make one eye to get to maintain strength and then operate in a way that's connected and maybe out. So here you basically have a sequence of, of forced moves. Uh, because now black can play here, which is still a problem for the group and gives black the opportunity to get out into the center, right? So now when white plays here in order in order to not give white this second this other Atari, uh, you now have black is able to play this move here, which is Sente, and this move here, which is not Sente, to get an eye in, in Gote. Right? Because, again, you, white can't let these stones get cut off, right? So this move is a, is a threat. This being said, black is not done harassing this group. Because you, you're still attacking the eye space here. Right? Now white is able to try to get out. Now, of course, this strengthens this group, weakens this group. Makes sense so far, I think. Uh, black pokes at the eye shape. Can I kill all of this? White says, I would rather you didn't. Thank you very much. But black gets to connect in Sente because there's an Atari that would again be very damaging. So black, so white captures. And black gets to continue the sequence completely sealing in this group, or at least so it seems so far, and building all of this strength towards the center, which, remember, this group has to do something about this strength. It's going to be harder and harder for white to get out. Like, the direction here is basically gone, so white now has to try and go maybe that way or maybe that way. But that's after this group is saved, right? So, white is, gets a forcing move here, saying, can I cut this off, damage this, take this stone? Black can't say yes to that, so black says, oh no, I have to make points. My life is so difficult. Look at me, I have to make points. And white gets out. But this is this is not bad, I'd say, right? Four four Kasumi this way and uh, three lines. Where are we here on points? Let's say uh, let's not count these two. Like three, seven, eleven, fifteen, seventeen, nineteen. Let's say this is a twenty-ish point corner. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Significant. So things add up, right? This plus these. Uh, white has a point over here. All right. Maybe another point here. And then uh, these aren't points yet, and these aren't points yet. So White is struggling a little bit still on this board, right? And this is this fight is not going the way it was supposed to at all. And of course, uh, it's Black's turn to play. Black has a forcing move here at some point, whenever. But it is time for Black to go back to attacking this group. And so white tries to counterattack by creating a liberty uh, a liberty shortage and playing this move. So now we have the options. You know that uh, you can create a bit of a liberty shortage here. White can play the throw in. You can kind of follow what happens. Black protects, right? Black doesn't care so much about the development here. Black really just needs these not for points, but for liberty, liberty checks against these stones, right? Um, 
Now, technically, this move is like a three and a half point mistake according to Katago, but the end result is very similar to what happens in the game directionally. So, if you want to see it, it's in it's in the SGF. But I don't know if it's worth sharing this with you here in this video. Uh, so now white gets to come back here. Obviously, we're going to extend here. This gives us white another sente move over here. Because again, we need black needs these stones to stay alive. No snap back, pretty please. Now white continues to build strength towards the center. So now we have to consider these two cutting points here for white. They're they are uh, they are the dangers that white is is playing with. Now, uh, white plays this move. It's a obviously a connecting move to get strength to reinforce to start probably attacking these stones or at least to offer a possibility of attack to maybe help this group get out. Um, the AI, interestingly enough, this is one of those rare times when, well, I'm going to take that back, but the, the AI has a different direction in mind. The AI would like to play uh, here. Again, there's a, a sequence here in the SGF, basically letting, basically sacrificing these stones to develop a bit of a moyo. And the one of the results is basically that if you play in this direction, this group is left to struggle to find its eye space because it does it has one eye, but it doesn't yet have two exactly. So if you play in this direction, you would have the opportunity to strengthen this and then poke at this a little bit at the same time. But white played a more defensive move. And that lets black turn. Now there's a very, very thin connection between these two stones, which uh, black leverages later. It is time for white to try now with a beat to impact the, the group. So white pokes at the cut. And black connects. White jumps. It would be nice for white to get the tiger's mouth, of course, here as well to expand. So black fortunately gets stronger. Right. This reinforces this connection. And white doesn't have a ton of choice to move fast here because this is still weaker and this cut here is still very much a problem. So white goes out and tries to find a direction out. You have an advantage where it's beginning to look like you'll be able to get something with these stones. But black is now going to ask one more question and this reduces and this removes um, eye potential. Right, so now this group is again just floating. And now black plays another one of those, I don't know, I, I think of these moves as like the Shusaku style moves. I don't know, I can't tell you why, but black plays this move. It's like, hello, I'm on the fourth line, I'm a large, I'm a large knight's move. But clearly, it's clearly attacking these stones. It is challenging the eye space of these stones. And because this is one, two, three stones in a row, this is not too... It, this is like a mega or Gaiga table, if you will, or a Gaiga broken table. You probably will not find this shape in any dictionary. Um, and uh, if you call this a Gaiga table and someone asks you where you got that from, don't say you got it from me. That's all I'm going to say. But... Uh, yeah, this, this move has to feel pretty good for, for white, for black to play, because it is tricky to figure out what white is going to do in Sante here. Now, the game is not necessarily over, but, you know, we're still 
table is so big, it's actually a floor. Yep, it's pretty much. Uh, so the game's not necessarily over, especially if you have Fighting Spirit, which White seems to have a lot of, which is good. So because you do have some of these four symbols here. And then, of course, I suppose White plays in the middle of the floor. Now, if white is successful here, if white's idea to take these stones or these stones works, then we're good, right? Then everything is fine. So it is time for black to, of course, uh, ask some questions about how that's going to work. So white is going to ask, how uh, how is it going to work? White creates a little bit of shape. Black pulls back out gently. Now black is um, black is not trying really hard to kill this or this or right. What black is trying to do here, it breaks black's shape at least. Yeah. Well, that's the question: is um, how many shapes was this? Because if we go back a couple of moves, um, so. If you go back a few moves, right? Okay, but now remove this for a second, right before this. When you look at this shape, how many how many potential black shapes is it? Because you have this, which is playing at the center of three, right? Um, you would have kind of uh, this move, which would be this like L shape. You've got the boomerang shape here. Um, You've got these these space these jumps. Uh, what else do you have? Um, this is an anvil shape. Um, yeah, like there's there's a lot of shapes here, right? Like there's a lot of little things that uh, that black is doing. So one of the questions about how to manage this. The shape break is also, from a very simple perspective or from a simplistic perspective, which shapes are you allowed to make in the ensuing sequence, and what are your and what's your purpose for those shapes, right? And here, when you look at this exchange, black is not trying absolutely his hardest to capture these stones because these stones don't matter. Black needs to maintain strength. Because black has a gigantic target here, and if these stones get stronger, then this group cannot go that way. Right? <laughs> I mean, O11, it feels like the place to play to attack. That's absolutely guaranteed true, yeah. Um, so now, white plays a clamp, again, because if you can make eye shape here, like one eye over here, you're good to go. So black is gonna ask, can I can I cut? White says, do you mind if I make an eye somewhere? Black says, well, I mean you can maybe try to make an eye here, but I'm gonna challenge you making a, a proper eye somewhere else. So white says, okay, well can I can I cut and take those two stones or maybe make an eye on the side of the board? Black says, well, you can't take those two stones. I like them too much. So, white says, okay, but I can make an eye on the side of the board, right? Black says, okay, fine. What I wanted to do anyway was build this strength so that these stones are heavily surrounded. So, okay, we have a bunch of groups on the board. Let's do another little summary of what's happening. We have... Oh boy. Uh, this group is now uh, alive. Because White's next move is to take this stone because you have to. But this group is this group is fine now. It's good. It's alright. It's alive. Uh, this group has some eye shape around here. And it's out in the open. Right? It can make one eye in Gote. It's not, it's not in massive, massive danger. Let's put it this way. But it's still not alive. Um... This group here 
is just alive, right? It's fine. No, no big deal. No, no danger, no problem. Uh, this group here has one eye and is and has enough shape to make a second eye somewhere. But it doesn't have the second eye yet, right? It has to make it. If this group makes an eye and then they connect through this false eye, then both of these groups will be alive, which would be nice. Uh, this group has uh, it has one guaranteed eye right now. It can play here for a second one. It is so this group is is alive kind of regardless. Like even if white's if, if black takes a forcing move somewhere, uh, white has can make another eye. So you, white is okay here. This group is clearly alive. And uh, this group here, we're going to say this is a group, even though these stones are a bit disconnected. It has one potential eye, and it has space for a base here on the right side. So, white plays here, and this is going to challenge the eye space, because you also have to, um, right, you can connect, but these, this will not be eye space anymore. Uh, oh boy. Black is going to now start to challenge this area here in those uh, those groups, saying, "Are we? Are they gonna really gonna be able to make two eyes and points?" So white plays this move, which, uh, if I recall correctly, the AI really wanted black to take forever, just as a forcing move, as a Kikashi for the Aji. But black gets to. Um, Black gets to respond here. Now, um, here, white plays here to challenge the growth over here. This is an effort to connect, I think, these two stones, and an effort to seal this in and maybe maybe capture it. But this, according to the AI, ends up being a, a three-point mistake because the direction is off. The AI wants to play from here. The, the variation basically encloses the bottom area better, so it kind of seals in better points for white. At this point, black is up 30 points, which means uh, black has made up one more stone of handicap. So white is not doing super well on this board. And so, of course, black plays right there. It makes the dog face, if you want to look at it simplistically, but it splits these two stones and it mean it means this group has to run further that just can't be good for for white so white is gonna say can i cut stones off and get stronger and when black connects here now black has uh me eye to make two eyes so the group is gonna be alive now right now now we're good now we're fine White is going to now continue to extend. We make this boomerang shape here. We're closing off the space for these stones to make a base. But black gets to play here. So white extends, clamps, again, shapes. And then black starts to say, hey, you know all these stones? Are they? Can I have them? I think we can understand that white will say no. Um, now, black plays here next, which of course creates a bunch of Mi situations for cutting points here. This, um, amazingly, is apparently a seven point mistake. The AI should really just descend uh, here first. It would build a lot of strength. White does get to play this move, and then they have a couple of more moves in, in the SGF. Um, the Shuseku Study Project has a couple more moves here. But these end up being... Uh, so weirdly enough, we are kind of in the end game, sort of. Like We're not quite there, right? Because until this group is alive, we're not in the end game. Right, because endgame begins when all the groups are alive and the, when all life and death status is resolved. So this would be kind of doing endgame, and this would be challenging 
more life and death and then getting more strength for this group so a lot of the efforts for white would be to live uh from now on like a lot of the variations that the ai will suggest now involve making making life for this group uh wait sorry i'm in the wrong variation this is what happens after we get this clamp uh so black plays here white connects now black encroaches here this is probably this was part of the direction that black had in mind for this but it gives it gives this i guess a bit of uncertainty about the next moves and who gets sente here so here we're really sort of challenging the connection to the to the right side Oh boy, um, here's a move I I didn't add a variation for for this, um, but Q. Oh, the AI here wanted White to uh, to capture this, almost definitely because uh, this gives more strength here for White to connect to something. But White goes here. Which is apparently a six point mistake. Uh, it lets black connect this way. You've got to imagine that white figured he could take this stone forever, and maybe here, when he protects the corner, figure this might be good enough. But this is a fairly s subtle situation, and black is already resolving this, right? Black is just playing endgame now. Black sort of says, hey, look, this group is alive. Just make it live. You know, I don't, I'm not trying to kill it anymore. You get to do whatever you want. I'm going to get my endgame points, and I'm going to be happy with it. So we're resolving all of this. And then Black captures the stone. Uh... So now, so this group here, where are we with this group, right? This group has, you can, black can play here to kind of falsify this, but there's guaranteed one eye for sure. And I think there's, uh, um, and black, black can, and white, white can play here to help make a second eye. So I think this group is good. This group is okay. This group has one eye over here, but might be able to make a second one, depending on how uh, the sequence works out here. This group still only has one eye, and everything else is alive. So, um, black at this point on the board, if you add this, 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 this capture, um, black on the board has like 60 points, and white on the board, like this, what, this is like, this is 29 points approximately. Um, this is three points. This is 20 points. This is 14 points, roughly. Uh, so if you add all this stuff together, white has like 17 points and black has 60. So even if all of this becomes white territory, which is basically impossible, but if all of this becomes white territory, white is still behind 15 points on this game. So um, victory is, we're going to say, a challenge. But white has fighting spirits. White is going to try to poke things here. Maybe try to figure out if there's a way to cut. Um, just building as much as possible. Uh, and then white is going to play here. Now this turns out to be uh, almost a four point mistake. And black is up 40 points. Because um, white could actually seal in black a little better again there's i have variations in the sgf for this but that's not what white is trying to do here like white is really just preoccupied with making with living because um and now white now the group is alive and now that this is alive and this is settled and we're done black says well look we should talk about this group right this is and again he's not necessarily trying to kill this 
right? He's not trying to capture it, but all of these could be white points, and part of what you do is you make sure that your opponent can't make points, right? If Especially if you're in the lead, you just say, look, I have my points. I just want you to not have points. I think we can talk about this like civilized people. Right? Like, uh, like in, the, in the Princess Bride, right? You mean, I'll put down my sword, and you'll put down your rock, and we'll try and kill each other like civilized people. So, white connects. Now black gets to play this other move, which now gives life to this group. Right now it's going to have two eyes here. Uh, there's a move I'm missing. I'm sorry. The After this happened, black played here, and then white played here. Sorry I missed that. Um, but this is all definitely connected, and this is, this is live, right? And this is also why uh, this jump and like this funny made more sense. Now, here, all of this is becomes massive fighting spirits. Um, the AI here wants to do something else. We, White has a five-point mistake, technically. White should capture this stone, strengthen this up, and then do what he you can to seal this up. But that's just absolutely not what White is doing here. Like White doesn't, doesn't see this or doesn't want it. Like wants to do something else. So White is going to seal up over here. Like pre preserving points, I suppose. And so black will very, very gently go over here and continue to destroy the points. White gets to Atario Stone. And black says, okay, I'm all right with this. Um. Uh, here I've had I've struggled at this point on the board. Black is up forty five points, and it's forty five points is around the time when it's tricky for the AI to make good decisions because it's like I don't know I, I don't know something somewhere black will screw up I guess. Um, but while this is marked as a two point five or a three point mistake, uh, and and the AI would prefer this move to this Kosumi. It looks like um, this is a higher percentage of victory, but with fewer points, which is weird because like you're 45 points behind, right? And this seems to be a higher chance of victory, but you lose points. So um, I think this is actually probably the better move for black to play now because it's slightly higher chance of winning. Not that the not that they necessarily you know thought about it in terms of statistics at, at the time, right? Uh, but this is this is where we are. This is the exchange for the game, right? We are 166 moves in, and we are finally resolving the life and death status. Of this massive group that has been plaguing us since the beginning of the game, right? All, all of this is Joseki. <laughs> I kid, I kid. It, it really isn't. Uh, but this this all came apart from this. It all came from this Joseki uh, deviation, right? So, white tries to prevent ice base and maybe surround here. Um, all right, so now this is one of those amazing things. Full board Joseki. Yeah, yeah, like the Taisha. All right, so here, this is one of the fun times that you, you get to see these things sometimes. Um, Black plays this. Apparently, this is a 20-point mistake. Now, to put this in context, this is a 20-point mistake after which black is up 40 points. Okay? So, not game-ending, right? Um, but black at this point is a 60-point lead. Um, the AI would probably would want to play this, but this is a kind of really still more complicated... Uh, knife fight in the phone booth and black doesn't need to enter the phone booth so um black will say look i want to win i don't care how i don't want something complicated or hard or difficult or whatever 
Uh, but, yeah. Now, white plays here. This is a, a 10 point mistake, and I'm going to go into the variation uh, that, that Katago suggests here because Katago actually would force a sequence to create an eye on the bottom, which, you know, would be kind of important, would be, would be kind of nice. But uh, it is different. So, white here would connect here. Black would take this Atari. White connects. This is all a Katago suggestion, right? Bamboo joint. Asking, asking move. Asking if we can cut. Connect. Asking if we can take the stone. It's not quite a snapback yet. Capture it here. Capture it here. It's difficult to know what to do when every move seems to win. Um, yeah, I mean, I I agree. Um, okay, so you would have this sequence here, where you have um, a guaranteed eye here, right? And then you get to come back here in Sente, and I believe this gives you the last eye that you need. Uh, no, it doesn't. One two, three, it doesn't. This is just enough to like reduce things. But you can make one eye, I think on the side of here, maybe with a co, because you're on the third line, you might have just enough room. So this is the, what the Katago would suggest as a sequence. Uh, it is kind of involved. Let me see if I can now properly undo all those moves. I'm gonna do it move by move because this is kind of crazy it is it's also very tricky now if i forget to remove a stone it's gonna really mess with you so i'm trying to not screw that up yeah yeah remove that 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 i Okay, um, so now sanity check here on where we are right before the variation. There's nothing here, there's two stones. Okay, alright, we're good. We're good, we're back to where we were. <sighs> um, now, one of the... The reason this move is probably just good and played by Shusaku and just why he's just okay with it is because now... Now white absolutely can't prevent this group from making two eyes, right? Like black, black plays at C12, wherever C12 is. Um, this is C12 by chance? Yeah. Either black will play at C12 or black will capture the C12 uh, B12. No, sorry. Yeah, I wrote this incorrectly in the SGF. Either black will, pl will play here and make an eye or um, if black white plays here, you're good. Or if white cuts here, you're going to capture this stone, right? So, at this point, um, at this point, your black is content. But now you'll notice either way, black finally comes back and takes this at the cost of twenty points, right? But he, but he simplified the situation enough for him for his own purposes. Uh, now he's going to ask if he can cut. White is going to say, "No, all right now." I really need to connect because I can't do anything fancy in this board position. So black comes back and connects here. Uh, yes, because these stones can't cut because otherwise they get captured, right? White peeps, which of course is absolutely a forcing move. And then white is going to ask if he can cut, which he can't. Right, white plays here. White cuts. Now this supposedly is a three-point mistake. Um, white should play over here to get a slightly, slightly more points possibly. But again, black is fifty-six points up. You know it's. Um, it's very hard for Katago to really give good advice at this point. 
So. Uh, so we're here. And now white does get to play this move. Black descends. White is going to try really hard to do something on this side of the board. Black is going to try to reduce and say, hey, look, this group here, I feel like maybe there's something I can do to this group. You haven't been super, super forthcoming with all this stuff. Uh, and then here, white connects. Uh, I wrote at this in, in the SGF, we have like, um, maybe this was a teaching game. It's not clear why like white just did all of this all the time, all these places, but uh, it may just also have been that just white got completely outplayed, right? And the, uh, it's, it's hard to tell. Next, oh, I'm going to sneeze, it's going to be weird. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. Um, the last game was like that. Yes, the, the first game, this is the second game against Nakagawa Junsetsu, and the first game was similar, where it just became this very, very big fight, and uh, Nakagawa ended up behind by a lot. Um, this was the part where I stopped making Katago analysis, because um, when white plays here, um, Katago says this is a 34-point mistake. So black is up 100 points on the board. And if you're not totally sure... <laughs> then I get, it gets better. It, it, it gets better. This is a, So it's possible they missed... It's possible they both missed what was happening here. I'm not sure, right? Um, but black plays here, which is another 34-point mistake. Uh, it's, I guess, it's a big fight. I mean, look, we've seen something like this even recently, like in the in the year I don't know between 2010 and 2020, I think. I think Cho Chi Kun played this like, this very complicated game where at some point it was like a hundred a hundred and sixty-seven point mistake or something. Right, um, but the uh, supposedly the move, the suggested move for for black to play here was just connect here at h10, just connect, and then there's no shenanigans, nothing you're gonna be able to do here. That's what you should do. But black is gonna say play here. Uh, then the, I think maybe they both missed it because see they're just playing endgame now or they're just kind of well let's put it this way maybe they didn't miss it but they're like it's a co I want to do this later I don't want to deal with it black just connects and now now white plays it now white says okay it's it's time to do this it's it's time to get into this so we start this we start this fight. White extends. White takes the co. Black takes an Atari here. Now, these moves aren't marked as mistakes, right? So it's not like Katago is saying that this is completely incorrect, but Katago thinks some of this stuff should have happened earlier. I'm just gonna walk through this. I don't know if it's worth adding a ton of commentary here. Um, this apparently is a seven point mistake and black is up only 71 points now. Um, But it's okay because when white replies here, white loses six points.
Yeah, only 71 points. This supposedly is a three point mistake. Black responds here with a 10 point mistake. So now black is up 67 points. I, uh, you know. Uh, now taking the co itself is now a mistake. A seven point mistake. I'm guessing this is, I'm actually surprised I didn't add some variations here. I think I just saw 100 points and went, all right, I'm out. But um, I'm guessing when black made the mistake here, there was something that for white to do here, which would have changed things a little bit. Uh, but don't worry, black plays here, which is now a four point mistake. So now black is up 70 points. I, I don't know what to tell you. Um, this is this is a weird mix between endgame and a very complicated fight. I can't, taking this code back was a, a mistake. This is also a mistake. Black responds, which is fine. Sorry, I I think I must have done this when I was not super awake. And so uh, I think some of those Kadago moves, as I play, as I put the stones down and I walk through this, I'm like, you know, I really should have looked and added variation indicating why those, are, those black moves were mistakes because some of them are interesting to look at. But... White is going to try to live with this group. You get to say how likely that is to happen. White plays a throw-in here. Which... Black says, okay, it's fair. It's fair. Black plays an Atari here. Black takes the co. We get a nice little co thread here. Take the co. Another kind of a nice little coat right here. Um, white plays here, which is uh, a mistake. Um, it turns out white should play here. This is not a gigantic mistake, I suppose. It's a three-point mistake, but but black is up eighty-nine points, so it's hard to to know what to what to say that's useful here for. Katago or a human being, right? Just like, hey, look, this game is kind of over. But for, you know, chances are they were very deep in this game. And I think if they're both hoping for, you know, it's easy for Katago to say that white is up, that black is up 100 points when there's a co fight going on. And the result of this co-fight might be an eye, right? Like, it, we think it's desperate for white because we have Katago telling us this. But, but we don't necessarily know this. On the other hand, after this mistake and after black plays here, um, these stones are now dead. So this is when white resigns. Black is up 90 points. This this was it. Uh, interesting Ho at the very, very end. Uh, probably a very valuable game to remember if you want to practice like counting for Ko fights and complicated things. There's a, there's a lot of stuff going on in here. But yeah, I, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, thank you for, for tuning in. The um, we this was game two of four against Nakagawa Junsetsu. We've got two more games. 
I cannot remember now if they are as crazy from a fighting perspective. I believe I believe at least one of them is a much, much calmer well let's see. I believe at least one of them is a very very different type of game where Nakagawa tries to not get into one massive protracted fight towards the center. I think maybe both of the I think maybe both remaining games are like that too. But I can't remember. Uh, you are welcome. I am glad you enjoyed the games. Uh, so uh, because uh, because I am a Twitch affiliate. I think that's the word. Uh, I have to, the, the videos have to be delayed 24 hours when they're published after they're being streamed before they can be published anywhere else. So this video is going to be on YouTube tomorrow, which is going to be what day are we in? July 18th at like noon Eastern, something like that. Uh, as usual, if uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you like this, uh, you know, like subscribe leave a comment if you saw something wrong leave a comment if you saw something wrong and you really really want to fix it you got a bunch of options uh you can join my discord you can um and just we can talk about it there you can show us what was wrong you can also uh, go to the home page which the, the landing page for the project is in the description and you can find the sgfs there you can download the SGFs and uh, and add variations, and then like you know, upload the SGFs in the in the Discord channel, for instance, um, and tell me what you changed, and then I can make the updates and publish the new SGF. Uh, and if you want to help and participate in this effort to analyze all these games. Uh, you absolutely should uh, do it. We need more good people, and the more people we have, the less work we each individually really need to do because we don't all need to do the same work. We can distribute it. Uh, actually, in this particular case, I forgot to begin the video by thanking the contributors. Uh, we have uh, Go and Excess, uh, Bugcat, DE, and, and myself were the contributors for this particular game. So. Uh, yeah, thank you to uh, thank you to everyone, and uh, I will I will see you in uh, in the next video. Take care, everyone.